Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Power Life TV broadcast, Power Life TV channel. We are restoring families with Pastor Brian. And Pastor Tasha. <laughs> Here to give you another great broadcast. Hey, we're back. We're glad to be back. It is a wonderful Monday morning, and we got some good content for you today. Amen. Hey. You know, y'all have been requesting this and asking for this for a while and we've been saying no yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's time but no more no it's time it's time to say yes yes well praise the lord uh we want to just uh remind everyone to watch us on youtube uh, on facebook on uh, on uh, twitter we also want to let you know that most of our broadcasts will brought will come forth on youtube so if you go out to our channel Hit like, hit subscribe, hit that notification bell, and we would love to. I found out, and I didn't finish my sentence, but I found out that you can do the likes on, on YouTube now. Oh, really? Yeah, you can do the love, you can do the hearts. Okay. Yeah, you can do the laughy face now. I, I thought that was pretty cool. I, Sister Carla told me about it. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm glad that it has all of this stuff. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, we have a great subject yeah. today. Let's get into it. We're talking about love and marriage. Love and marriage. And uh, in particular. Go together like a horse and carriage. <laughs> and we're talking about love, sex, and dating. Right. Which should proceed marriage. Right. Come on. <laughs> well, not the sex part, but the love and dating part, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get into all that. That's right. <laughs> well, uh, Go ahead and get a pen, get a paper, get your Bible out, and take some good notes. We're gonna we're gonna share some things with you. Amen. Um, let's go ahead and jump into this. You want to give them a scripture to start off with, sure. and then we we'll go from there. Yes. So the first thing we want to consider, or thought, think about, talk about when it comes to love and marriage, uh, we want to start with the subject of love, sex, and dating. Mm -hmm. And you know, we live in this technology age where you know. Literally, people are not dating the way they used to. Mm -hmm. A lot of relationships are starting online and through electronic means, and we just don't necessarily do things what you know the old-fashioned way at times. However, mm -hmm. uh, you know the Bible tells us to do this to walk in understanding concerning love, sex, and dating. Mm -hmm. And there's certain things about the subject of love, sex, and dating that will never change. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ephesians 5, 8 through 11 tells us that as Christians who, who are still interested in these three topics, the Bible says walk in the light mm -hmm. concerning these things. Yeah, that's good. And uh, in verse 8 it says, For you were once darkness, but now you are a light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Yes. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Yeah, so so yeah. I, I find it interesting that the, the Bible says, find out what's acceptable to the Lord. Mm -hmm have no fellowship with unfru unfruitful works mm -hmm. but rather expose those things that are unfruitful why would you do such a thing you know a lot of times as christians when we see things that are not good or not fruitful we just turn a blind eye to it mm -hmm. because we're trying to not offend yeah that's right that's <laughs> right but you know when you when you're looking at the things of walking in the light and walking in righteousness it says Find out what is acceptable to the Lord. You know, one of the things that I I learned in my own heart, or I desired in my own heart when I got born again, is to do what was right. Yes. You know, I, I had a heart to do what was right. Mm -hmm. And did I know everything? Was I perfect? No. But I was striving to find out God's way of doing things. Yes. And so if it took me you know, not pursuing the things that I used to pursue, then I was going to do it. Right. Because I got away from that. Right. And so, you know, um, righteousness has a big thing to do with not, it's, it's, it's big in so much not what we do, but it's what we believe. 
explain that. Now, uh, when we were made righteous, we were born again, we, and we were made righteous, right with God. And that that means that our righteousness now is not our own. Mm -hmm. Our righteousness is what Jesus has conferred upon us. Mm -hmm. So righteousness now is is a nature. Mm -hmm. I think you're thinking about the subject of righteousness, oh, yeah. and you're really, that's your, that's yeah. your real heart. Oh, yeah. uh, but it, it, it all has to do with this, too, because you can't, the foundation must be righteousness. You must, you must have a sense that you're right with God, mm -hmm. and having a sense that you're right with God means that you can have confidence in certain areas. Right. You know? So in the area of love, sex, and dating as a Christian, you know, it's easy to feel like, I don't know if I have confidence in this that's area. That's right. The mm -hmm. reason why is because the flesh can be so strong. Mm -hmm. You know, and the, the real question is, as a Christian, can you walk in the light? That's it. Because there's so much darkness around you. You know, mm -hmm. the, the so darkness yeah, tends to give the illusion that it could take over, that it could be more pronounced than the righteousness that comes from the Word of God. Yeah, you so know, true. so God's Word makes the journey you know, uh, uh, concerning love, sex, and dating, uh, it makes the journey plain. Mm -hmm. And uh, so concerning these things, we're going to get the wisdom and the understanding from God. Mm -hmm. We're going to find out what's acceptable to God, and we'll have no fellowship from what the Bible calls works of darkness. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. the product of walking in the light, the Bible says, is fruit. Yeah. But the product of walking in darkness, the Bible says, is just works. Yeah. And I think that's yeah. quite. Yeah, I want you to explain that though. So works there's a, darkness. So there's a passage in the Bible, and it talks about the judgment seat of Christ. Mm -hmm. And you can look this up in your own time. It basically says this: that in the end, that the fire of the Holy Spirit will test everything you do. For purity mm -hmm. and this fire will burn up everything you do mm -hmm. and the things that were done with the purity and the right motives and everything that has to do with walking in the light it will get better and more refined mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. as gold gets more refined mm -hmm. in the fire that's good but anything that was done out of a wrong motive anything that was a work of darkness it's going to behave, the Bible says, like work wood, hay, and stubble. It's just going to be burned up. It's going to turn to ash mm -hmm. in the presence of holy fire. So works of darkness then means whatever I do with a selfish intention, maybe? Yeah, I mean. Even though I'm saved. That's a good point because when it comes to love, sex, and dating, the worst thing you can bring to the table is selfishness. Mm. If you're just wow. getting, yeah. uh, you know, uh, getting a date, you know, for your own personal gratification, if it's all about you, mm -hmm. then perhaps maybe, you know, you're not really ready for dating because everything having to do mm. with love, That's sex, good. and dating That's has good. to do with two people, mm -hmm. hopefully two unselfish people coming into a common union with God. So anytime it's all about you, you probably need to be alone. Mm. Now, that is so good because that's a, that's a mind transformation. Because when I used to date, I'm thinking about myself. Right. You know, what I want, what, what I, I want. need. And it's, it, a lot of the buzzwords out there today is uh, you complete me. Right. You know, um, I'm better with you. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's it's still a selfish motivation. But what we're learning now is to walk in the light. You're walking not in self fulfillment. You're walking in God fulfillment. Right. And you're finding out His ways of doing things. So 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 now, when it comes to love, sex, and I know we're gonna get into this, but when it comes to love, sex, and dating, I want to make sure that the audience understands my motivation must be what can I do for the person that I'm courting. Right. And then, you know, uh, and we do need to jump into yeah. this. But um, as long as I'm, I'm approaching this wrong, it will end up in personal brokenness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of times we love the mm -hmm. idea of personal love. Brokenness. 
We love the idea of having someone to care about us. You know, you remember on Coming to America, yes. the prince started singing, Someone Some to, to Care, yeah. Someone to Share, yeah. you know, and he just wanted someone to kiss, mm -hmm. somebody to hold hands wow. with, yeah. somebody to walk through the park with, and all of those things are wonderful. But as long as you're only thinking about you, mm -hmm. you're going to find brokenness in what should have been bliss. Mm -hmm. You're going to find that you're not as whole or maybe in the first place before you ever entered into a relationship you were already broken and there was something you needed from God mm -hmm. that you were trying to get from an individual yeah right right well let's talk about singleness then in this yes. situation when it comes to love sex and dating so if you say okay well, Pastor T, that's not me I'm not a selfish person I'm single I'm whole now, give me some good advice on what I should do if I'm believing God or I'm desiring a spouse. How do I go about this? So you should, first of all, take time to discover who you are. Remember what I just said, that if you go into a situa situation and you're already broken, you know, that you will find that that other person will not help your brokenness. Mm -hmm. In other words, your brokenness will probably be harmful or hurtful to what could have been an otherwise good relationship. So before you ever enter into a dating situation, you should take time to discover you, mm -hmm. discover who you are. Mm -hmm. But when, when, when I hear the word singleness, I, you know, for, for lack of a better word, I didn't understand singleness. I thought being single means I have nobody, no one. You see what I'm saying? I, I'm alone. Mm. I'm by myself. Is that what singleness meant to you? That's what it used point? to mean to me. And I'm pretty sure it means that to some, some other people listening to this. Mm -hmm. You know, because, again, we got to come in with a, a whole new mind transformation. Mm -hmm. that, that, that way of thinking was, if, if you tell me I'm single then you're telling me that I have no one. You're telling me that I'm broken in some kind of way. I need somebody, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but what does singleness truly mean? Before we move into this uh, talk, what does singleness truly mean? Mm -hmm. Does it mean um, alone or does it mean whole? Uh, I'm thinking you want to explain that. Yeah, I mean, I just want to, I just kind of want to touch on that because singleness means complete. Mm -hmm. You know, singleness means that I have shalom, nothing missing, yep. nothing broken. Mm -hmm. You know, I can be single. I, I not heard Miles Monroe say this, and I adopted for our own lives, but we are single and married at the same time. That's right. That means that I don't need you to fulfill the hole in my life or a gap in my life mm -hmm. that God has already filled. That's right. And so, therefore, I can be 100% to you. Right. And you can be 100% to me. Right. Because... God has given me everything that I need. That's right. That's and, right. And when you're that in that mode, when you're in that way, um, you won't have unrealistic expectations. So, so singleness true. means complete, whole, all the pieces of the pie are put back into your life. Amen. 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 So that's a little, you know, it does have to do with discovering who you are, figuring mm -hmm. out if you're single. Yeah. You know, because some people are out there looking for their other half and they haven't become whole. Come on. That's right. That's, that's right. <laughs> They're looking for a 50-50 love. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, there are some some practical do's and don'ts mm. that we can do. Okay. And we can talk touch on that because, you know, a lot of times when we have this talk, they say, okay, all that spiritual stuff is good, but what do I do in this situation? Mm. In this practical good. situation. So here's a practical situation that we can touch on. If you're attracted to someone, what are some things that you should not do? Mm -hmm. Well, number one, don't be desperate to get attention. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a good one because many times people will become someone else just to get attention. Mm. They'll become who they're not yes. to get attention. I, I was just thinking about a conversation you and I just had. And uh, I said, yeah, when I move into this particular situation, I'm going to do this, 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 and that. And you said, no, be yourself. Oh, yes. You know, because I, because I have a way mm -hmm. that in my mind seems like 
the right way. Right. But it takes uh, it takes a third. I mean, a third. It takes another uh, viewpoint and another revelation to give me a perspective. Right. When, when you say don't don't do this, be yourself. That that showed me I don't need to be somebody else. Mm -hmm. Right. Who you are is good enough. Yeah. And you know, God, so good. We spend all this time uh, trying to perfect ourselves by being somebody who we're not mm -hmm. and I just think that's not what God wants from us mm -hmm. I think you know I think you're the best version of you that there is mm -hmm. and you know are there times that there are certain decorums that you must follow sure you know and I can yeah. attest to that yeah. you know sometimes some people need to be less of themselves in the moment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in a certain professional environment for, right, right. for example um, but when it comes to a dating environment, you shouldn't be so desperate for attention that you do these anxious, um, uh, sort of, uh, over the top acts mm -hmm. to get someone's attention. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times what people will do is they'll do something goofy or foolish, uh, to get the attention of the girl that they're attracted to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but girls really like guys who are self-confident. Mm -hmm. That's true. Confidence is the best thing you can put on. That's true. And if your natural self is funny, well then be, be funny. funny. Yeah. But if you're not naturally a funny guy and suddenly you start, Cracking you know, jokes. trying to crack jokes and it comes out wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it might, it's awkward. It's awkward. Yeah. It's awkward for you and the other person. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, many people read these over-the-top actions as a sign of your instability or insecurity. Yeah. A lot of times, right. that, that right. young lady, she's going to see right through what you're doing. That's right. And she's going to think that you're not confident enough in who you are. Mm -hmm. And that's why you have to behave like somebody else. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things that... I would say to girls is don't start following the guy that you're interested in. You know, a lot of times we're in this technology age yeah. and we can ghost a person, mm -hmm. you know, we can check them out without them ever knowing, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And so I, I recognize that, you know, this is the age we're in and that's something that women tend to do. Yeah. But, you know, one thing that has never changed is that men in a dating situation they tend to be natural born hunters mm -hmm. in other words yeah, when you begin to act mm -hmm. all head over heels for a guy you communicate a couple things mm -hmm. number one you're communicating that the chase is over yeah in other words he has nothing left to do mm -hmm. and That's right. That's right. it also tells That's him right that it's time for him to start chasing somebody else. That's right. Don't because, make it easy. Yeah, don't make it easy. Don't make it easy. Yeah, and you said something earlier, you know, minus all of the spiritual things, uh, but when you value yourself, mm. you're, well, whether you believe in God or not, when you value yourself, then the next person will value you. Yes. When you respect that's yourself. That's good. That's good. Then the next week, you teach people Come on. how to treat you. Yes. And, you know, like attracts like. You know, yes. a, a self confident person will attract another self confident mm -hmm. person. But a person that's shallow and insecure, mm -hmm. they'll attract a person that's shallow, shallow and insecure. And, you know, one of the things that I, and I say this, ladies, you know, and please don't get upset with me, but if you're too easy. Ah. Uh. The man is not going to want to go any deeper because if you're easy with him, he feels like you're gonna, you're gonna be, easy be easy with somebody, somebody else. else. That's right. So don't don't be don't be that that so head over heels needing a, that a attention. A needy person. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and and maybe we'll get into the idea of, of mm -hmm. uh, needing a father or somebody in your life, and you know uh, that may be a whole nother segment. But what we're saying is, 
Get your confidence and your trust in God. Get your yes, value in Him. Yes, that's right. And learn how to love yourself properly. Yes, I mean, really, when you're looking for a spouse, you should be it's looking. Men too. And, and by the way, you might say, too. wait a minute, how did we go from talking about dating to talking about looking for a spouse? Well, you should not be even dating if you don't think marriage. Come on, preach. That's so good. <laughs> that's right. Because all you're practicing is divorce. That's if right. That's the case. That's right. But, you know, so that's why we, we make the transition between dating and looking for a spouse. Because, you know, that sh there should be an end game involved. Otherwise, you're playing with somebody else's emotions. Mm -hmm. um, that's so good. But, you know, when, when a person is looking for a spouse, they're looking for somebody they can trust. And so if you're selling them a lie, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. are you really someone they can trust yeah. if you're pretending to be something you're not mm -hmm. are you really somebody they can trust mm -hmm. and so you you got to go back to that mm -hmm. you know when it comes to you know even the onset of dating and that's what we're talking about here the onset what do you do when you have those butterflies and you know you like somebody and you're a christian and you're trying to do things right what can what am I doing wrong? Because every time I try to reach out to this girl, or every time I try to reach out to a guy, I have the same old, uh, yeah. in you know, in results. Yeah. Well, maybe you're doing one of these things, and maybe it's time to change it up. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I know our time is running out, but there's a particular scripture in Luke chapter 16, mm -hmm. and I and I tell this to anybody that that's in that courting dating process uh it talks about a man that sat at a beautiful gate and, yes. the, and the rich man that lived behind that gate fared sumptuously i mean he he lived well but the man that sat at the gate the, the poor man only wanted the crumbs his mm -hmm. desire was so low right and god can only give you to the level of your desire mm, that's true so so because <laughs> his desire was so low all he ever got was crumbs right but when he sat there, the dogs would come and lick his wounds. The Bible says he was so wounded mm -hmm. that it attracted the dogs. Yeah. And what happens when you are, you know, and I know we're going to jump back into something else, but what happens when you're not valuable in your own sight mm -hmm. and you're not valuable in the sight of God, in your mind, Right. you're only going to attract who you are. Yes. And well, now tomorrow, we're going to talk about what should you do now we talked about the don'ts, mm -hmm. but what should you do? What are the do's? Yeah, I like the do's. <laughs> I do like the do's. I do. I do. I do. <laughs> you're so That's funny. what I do. So what are the do's when you're attracted to somebody? And by the way, what we're talking about, it has no age limit. Mm -hmm. I don't care mm -hmm. if you're a technical person and you're just like a maybe you're a teenager or you're a young adult, or if you are, you know, in your 70s or 80s and yeah. you're looking for a companion and you say, you know what, I would really like to start dating again, but you know, I haven't done this for 20 years. I haven't done this for 30 years. Mm -hmm. What are the do's and don'ts? Because I don't know the new rules. Well, well, the new rules are very similar to the old rules. Yes, yeah, so good. That's so Amen. good. Yeah. So we're going to stop right there. We're going to pick up here tomorrow. Listen, this whole thing is going to probably take us into the next month or so because <laughs> it's so chock full of revelation mm -hmm. and i like to hear if we can at some point in the in a few more segments down the line uh how to be a good friend mm -hmm. because friendship is the bedrock yes. of every good relationship you you show me a good friend yes and i'll show you a good husband amen you show me a good friend, and I'll show you a good father and mother. Amen. You show me a good friend, and I'll show you a good girlfriend or boyfriend. You know, right. but if you don't have the foundation of friendship mm -hmm. and that component right, everything else in that cake is gonna be messed up. You know, you can yeah. you can put all of these different <laughs> ingredients in that cake, and yes. it can be beautiful ingredients, but if you get one little component wrong, that whole cake is messed up. That's the truth. And so. Come back, watch us. It's going to be good. I believe that you're going to learn something. Listen, tell somebody about it. I know, you know, that I know that somebody is going through the the, the, the thing that we're talking about and you need to tell them, hey, come watch this Restoring Families with maybe, Pastor Brian and Pastor Natasha. Or maybe your friend has been complaining that they want to start dating again. Mm. 
Mm. Yeah, it may be it may be time for them to see this before they go into it. <laughs> Amen. Or maybe your friend always has bad relationships yeah. and they don't know why. Yeah. yeah, well, I want to pray with you today that you get healed of every trauma, wound, everything that you've been battling, the things that keep you in that state of depression and sadness. It is time for you to come out. Mm. You know, the Bible says that Lord that God heals your soul. The Lord wants to heal your soul. And so just receive this prayer today and believe God that he's preparing you for uh, the right one, the right mate, the right spouse in Jesus name. Father, yes. we just release our faith over those who are watching, those who are listening. We thank you, Lord God, for the healing of the Holy Spirit, the anointing of God that's sent to heal the broken heart. Be healed of all your traumas today. All of those echoes of your past, we call you, we call you righteous and we call you whole in Jesus name. Amen. 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 I pray that you receive this word today. Listen, mm -hmm. we want to we want to uh, get you to be a part of our of this broadcast. We want you to sow into this broadcast. Listen, there there there's so much that needs to go forth in these last days. And if you look for ways of getting the gospel out, God will look for ways of getting the finances in your hand. Amen. And so, sow into this project. This is good soil. And I promise you, you will begin to reap a harvest. You'll get revelation. Wisdom will begin to happen. Innovation will happen in your life. All of the things that you're believing God for, it'll begin to show up. Amen? Amen. Amen. Was this a good broadcast? I think so. I think so, too. So let us bless you today. The Lord bless you and keep you. The, the Lord, Lord make, make his face shine, shine upon you and be gracious to you. The, the Lord, Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. peace. We declare shalom and, and blessings over your life. life. And we declare that Jesus is Lord and he's upholding all things by the word of his power. Be blessed. We love you. And we'll see you next time. See you next time. Amen.